Hi, I'm Nick at SideView, and this is the Getting Started tutorial for SideView's Splunk app, Cisco CDR reporting and analytics. Let's jump right in and assume you know something about the app already. You may have even downloaded the free 90-day trial and spent the 15 or so minutes to set it up and install it and everything. At a high level, there are two main sides to the app, the browse side, typified by browse calls under here, and the report side, uh, mostly you'll end up in general report here. Bear in mind that under both of these sides, you can definitely create things that look like reports and things that look like dashboards. So the difference is maybe a bit more subtle than it sounds. This video is going to stick to that distinction between browse and report and talk about these two pages since they're really the core of the app. So let's leave this home page for now and go right into browse calls. You can see actually clicking this chart will take you to browse calls. Clicking this link will take you to browse calls. Clicking a lot of these will take you to either report or to browse calls. So we're doing the same thing the home page is urging us to do. We're just doing it immediately. Okay, this is the browse calls page. You'll see a lot of form fields up at the top, but let's ignore these for now. By default, this is just showing us the most recent calls that have terminated. The table is showing a few columns by default. And let's add a couple more columns and maybe take away these gateway columns. To do that, we click the edit fields button over here on the right. Call Manager has a huge number of fields in the CDR and CMR, and our app adds even more, bringing the total to about 200. This is one of the things that makes Call Manager CDR so much fun. Huh, you can scroll the left panel up and down here, and you can see I'm not kidding, uh, there's quite a lot. You can hunt in here for the fields you want, but I'm gonna use a trick and actually type in the first few letters of the field I'm looking for. By the way, there's a, a big table on the homepage of all the fields, you may have noticed that, and if you're browsing for a field by area, you might be able to find it in there. I'm, I know I'm looking for the MOS score, which here is called MLQK in Call Manager CDR. And I'm going to also do the quality field, which is a field the app adds that rolls up jitter, packet loss, and latency. And I'm also going to grab the two field, which is a roll up of all the location information we can grab either by parsing out the DN to get country code area code or by looking up the IP address in our site lookup. And I'm also going to grab one more thing, calling party area code. You can see if I just type in calling party, even for that one prefix, there's quite a lot of different fields that match. Oh, excuse me. So calling party area code. I click on it, and then it gets selected. You can also remove fields from this list by clicking on fields on the right side. I'm going to click these gateway fields and make them go away. And last but not least, you can actually reorder this. Note that the icon has changed this little four-way pointy thing and I can drag calling party area code up and put it just under calling party number. Okay, click the green button to apply our changes. Okay, here, ignore the fact for now that MLQK seems to be blank for a lot of my calls. It's not blank for all of them. It's an idiosyncrasy of our test data here. So now let's look at the text boxes and the pull downs up top. Let's enter an extension. I'm actually going to enter a wildcard of extension, not a full extension. 415328 star. And what the heck, let's also do a different one. Let's also look at, I know, 5704 star. You can enter any number of comma separated numbers or extensions up here. They can be wildcarded or not. I'm just going to enter these two expressions. And I'm going to change the call types pull down to show just incoming calls. And I'm going to put, you don't have to wait for the search to finish. I'm going to put MLQK greater than zero here. If you're thrashing the system and keep dispatching lots of searches and canceling them, it's fine. It'll, it'll just cancel the one you ran previously. So you don't have to let them finish like I'm doing here. <laughs> Um, MLQK greater than zero. This will, this will narrow this down to just calls that have some quality information and that have a MOS score greater than zero. Just a note, when you actually use the product, at a point like this where you have a few arguments entered into these filtering fields, you may actually get zero calls shown or at any rate fewer calls than you think should be shown. Uh, if that ever happens or when it happens, note that this pull down here is by default set to count only the thousand most recent matching records. And to make a long story short, sometimes combinations of filtering here 
require you to jump this up to all records. Note also that this header is saying the, the phrase at least 135 calls, which is a little strange. Uh, that's coupled together. If I were to set this to all records, it would get, get us a definitive number. Try not to worry too much about getting definitive numbers here because it, it makes this interface very slow. And that's not really what this interface is for. Um, that's more what the general report interface is for, getting definitive, hard, you know, pretty charts. OK. OK, let's click one of these calls just by clicking the row. You can see they highlight when I mouse over them. So let's take this one with the transfer. This takes me to call detail view, the call detail page. Note that the call detail page itself has two field pickers that you can play with if you want to see different fields. This obviously changes the eight fields that are here. Very quickly, I'll just throw some completely random fields in here. You can see if you have more than 10, it pages them. This can be useful. Uh, you can tweak this as you're doing a particular kind of call investigation or as you're interested in about a particular subset of fields on a particular day or week. Likewise, edit fields here would change the columns that are shown in the raw call legs. Some very top level information is called out here. Note that a lot of these things are lists, or, or links rather, excuse me. Uh, you may have noticed when I opened this earlier that underneath browse, there's a lot of other things you can browse, devices, phone numbers, gateways, sites. For each one of these, there is a corresponding detail view. So as you can sort of imagine, if I click this, it's gonna take us to device detail since I'm mousing over these originating device, destination device links. Likewise, over here on these DNs, if I click this, it's going to take us to phone number detail, or if I click these extensions over here. Anyway, there's other information on call detail, um, other calls to and from the calling parties, other calls to and from the called parties. You can click this and thus sort of walk the network of calls if you're doing uh, extensive troubleshooting. And last but not least, at the very bottom, all call quality information we have is just dumped out in the raw. All right. Note, um, note that in these detail pages, there's always a breadcrumb in the top left. You can, of course, jump back to browse calls by using the main navigation bar. That's how we got to it in the first place. But if you use the breadcrumb link to get back, it's going to actually preserve those filtering arguments that we were just using. So that's a very good thing. So let's click the browse link in the breadcrumb. Note that all our pull downs are set the way we were that say the way we had them, MLQK greater than zero, I'm searching for my two extensions, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that was a very quick tour of the browse side. Let's check out the reporting side. To get the reporting side, you actually should almost never just click general report here in the nav. The easiest way to get there is to click this hidden little blue link over here called graph calls over time. This is gonna essentially kick us sideways from browse calls over into reporting, but it's going to preserve all these arguments that we were, that we were doing, preserve our time range, preserve our, whatever we were doing, doesn't matter. So what we're looking at here is, it basically has given us a column chart of call counts over time for those same calls that we were just looking at. Now there's even more form fields up top. But notice that the top half of those fields are the same fields we were just looking at in browse calls. And note that all the filtering values came across with us. Now, so filter those out. Look at the second, the, the second half, this bottom half here between these two lines. This is sort of talking in the English language about what we're charting. It says chart the distinct count of calls over time split by, and then it says none. We can change these to anything we want. And this is sort of, the beauty and the terror of the general report interface because what do I want to change them to? I don't know. It takes a while. It takes a while to get sort of comfortable in here. Let's first change it to something easy. Let's change it from charting the distinct count of calls to some duration. So under the first pull down, I have average, max, min, sum, 95th percentile. Let's change it to sum. And the app is somewhat smart. It knows that I couldn't sum the thing I was that was selected before, so it changed me over to duration. You can see it's actually grayed out fields that it knows cannot be summed. And it's left only the things that are numeric. Hey, duration is actually what I wanted to do. So we want to get total call duration. There's another field, by the way, duration in minutes, which we can go find. But by default, duration is in seconds. And now let's change uh, the call types on the top left. Oh, we did this already. To just incoming, great. Let's change the split by pull down from saying none 
to saying calling party city. These pull downs contain a huge number of fields, by the way. So much like I used a, a shortcut in the field picker, know that you can do, you can type in the first few characters. You can't see exactly what characters I'm typing, but you can, you can type in the first few characters and it'll jump right to the matching of, of options. And that can save you a lot of time. Oops, I set this to actually change it. I didn't mean to. Let me change this back to calling party city. My apologies. Calling party. Wow, there's a lot of fields. City. Oh, let's change this stack mode pull down to say stacked. I'll let it load first so you can see what unstacked looks like. This is running on a laptop, so it's a little slow. It'll be faster on a production server. That's stacked. That's unstacked. There you go. Okay. So this is showing us the same uh, call duration, you know, uh, total call minutes report over time split by the, the city that the call is coming in from. So now I'm going to talk about how to create and save reports and dashboards. You may have noticed these save and create buttons. There's a pair of them in the browse side, as well as a pair of them here. Let's click this big green create button and we'll do create dashboard panel. You have to give three things a name. You have to name the search, you have to name the dashboard, and you have to name the panel, but that's the minimum. So I'm going to call this test for call it search for getting started. Call the dashboard getting started example. I'll leave these at their defaults to share with all other users. We can we can tweak these and, and allow it to be visible to only certain subsets of users, but that's a pretty advanced topic. I can also add this panel to an existing dashboard and not create a new dashboard. And last but not least, this is going to be duration over time split by city. And I'm going to change this back to column. Da, 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 da. You could run it as a scheduled search, then I would have to, a few more work, a few more things to do to set the schedule, but I'm not going to do that. Now we have created a dashboard. You can see that there's a bit of an idiosyncrasy or a bug, a problem, a mistake, where it turns off our stack mode. So you have to know, this is a little tip. For now, we have to click this little paintbrush icon to come back in here and re-click stack mode couple other things are like that. So you just sort of have to learn the Splunk dashboard editor system here as well as our report builder. But anyway, we can add a second or third or fourth panel. We can drag them around. There's nowhere there's nowhere else to put it because there's only one panel here, but you get the idea. So I'm going to go back and we did it. Okay, um, let's play with this report a little more. Now that we've saved it and shared it and done something cool with it, you saw that we could mouse over the cities in the chart chart legend here. Let's actually click one. Here I'm going to click Toronto. I could click just one of these bars, and it would zoom into that particular day. Or I could click the legend item, and it's just going to it's just going to narrow down to the Toronto part. So let's click the legend item. Whenever you click anything in this interface. Uh, it's going to do what it did here. It's going to keep you in the reporting page. It's going to figure out what combination uh, in what sort of and what combination of um, fields. <clears throat> excuse me. It's going to pick what combination of arguments it needs to add to what combination of fields, and that will effectively zoom you into those exact calls that you've clicked on. And then it's going to dump you back into distinct count of calls over time split by none. It's going to go take you back to that default call volume report. This is a little confusing the first time you do it, but after a while, it, you realize it's um, it's helping you just keep on doing this. You can keep on carving up this data and slicing and dicing and, and drilling in and drilling down. 
Uh, sometimes I call it endless drill down. Last but not least, we're going to flip this back from the reporting side back to the browse side. Remember, we got from browse over to report by clicking a link here that said graph calls over time. Now that we're on the reporting side, that same position is occupied by a link that says see calls. This in turn is your little escape hatch to switch sideways back over to browse calls. And it's going to preserve all of the top half of the filtering argument. So while we were over here in the reporting side, we picked up this extra argument calling party city equals Toronto. So I click see calls. So this is what I was um, saying before, that you're really free to flip back and forth between doing kind of ad hoc call investigations or simple call reports in browse and doing high level utilization reports or even sanity checks on the reporting side. You can flip back and forth between these two modes very easily. And um, in fact, that's really a very powerful way to use the app. Constantly cross check things. When you see something that doesn't look like it makes sense, uh, you're not sure if it's really in the data or if it's something you don't understand about the fields, click it, drill in, figure out what it is. Um, this is a tool you really drive forward. That is, that's it for getting started. There's a lot of stuff we did not get to, um, like how to set up call reports for inbound outbound calls for different departments, for office locations, how to troubleshoot and report on complex call flows, transfer issues, how to get the app to recognize office locations, how to run reports on alerts on 911 calls. There's a whole, a whole bunch of stuff around call concurrency and gateway utilization, circuit usage, site to site concurrency for internal calls is buried a little bit in browse sites. Busy hour calculations, Erlang reports, intraday usage patterns, international calls. It, it, it really goes on and on. This is a very long tail product. And um, essentially we fill the gaps by being able to do really almost any report you can imagine um, that another call accounting package might not have thought of ahead of time. So I hope you enjoyed this and thanks very much for watching. Uh, please watch our other videos uh, if there are any. Have a nice day.